So we left uh, New York City about 7.40 in the morning uh, this morning, uh, and it was just a beautiful day, uh, crisp. Uh, the sun was uh, high in the sky and warm, and uh, there wasn't a lot of traffic yet uh, out on the water, although some of the f uh, ferries were starting to run and take commuters into Manhattan. Uh, so we slowly uh, brought the throttles up and, um, and uh, came up on the plane past the Statue of Liberty on our right side as we uh, uh, came past the start line and then uh, we started, uh, Tyson started advancing the throttles uh, up to about 70 miles an hour and we ran uh, down the Hudson uh, and off into the ocean. So we were, uh, we were running pretty hard leaving New York and uh, we were running between 65 and 70 miles an hour for the first about 60 miles and so uh, that was uh, uh, although we were running in two to three and sometimes four foot seas, uh, the boat was doing a really good job of uh, um, eating up those uh, a little bit difficult conditions. And uh, Tyson was doing a good job of uh, keep, keeping the boat in the water, but also uh, getting as much speed as he possibly could out of the boat while I was uh, making sure that we were going on a straight line uh, here to Bermuda. Uh, but about uh, the 61 mile mark, we uh, felt a very loud and violent vibration and unfortunately we both knew instantly what that meant. Um, and what it means is uh, that we threw a blade off of our propeller. So our propellers have uh, six blades and uh, they have a, the Cummins uh, 5.9 engines uh, that we have develop a tremendous amount of torque. Uh, and so sometimes the propellers aren't up to the, uh, the horsepower that those engines uh, uh, put to them. And in this case, uh, one of the blades failed. And so that imbalance causes a very violent vibration. And uh, that was disappointing because although we had spares, we had two spares, it was very early on into the race. And so uh, we quickly came up with a plan to replace that propeller in water uh, which we did and then uh, we brought the throttles back up but we had to be more conservative now because we only had one spare left so we reduced our speed from 70 down to 55 which we uh, proceeded uh, onward to uh, Bermuda at. So we ran at 55 miles an hour for about uh, 500 miles uh, from that point uh, it is a really long way to Bermuda, most people don't realize, but it is uh, quite a distance. And so uh, we ran for about 500 miles uh, trying to be as easy as we could on the props. And uh, about 150 miles uh, outside of Bermuda, uh, several hours after dark, uh, unfortunately we experienced that vibration again and, and we knew what that meant. And so uh, the other propeller uh, threw a blade. Yeah, absolutely. At, uh, at the point where we threw the second propeller, uh, we were ahead of the world record, but not by a tremendous amount. We still had 150 miles to go, which is a long distance, and we knew that we were down to our final spare. So one of the things that we did before we uh, attempted that second propeller change out is to take two minutes and to calm down and talk through what we were about to do because we only had one shot. If we had dropped the propeller or dropped the wrench or dropped the nut or the washer, then we would have had to idle in. We would have lost the world record and uh, it would have taken us uh, <laughs> probably several days to idle here. So uh, it was a pretty critical propeller change out at night um, in underwater. And so uh, we talked through it first and then we were able to successfully change it out. Um, so we were, we were uh, fortunate that that went well. Um, we've waited quite a while for a good weather window and when both of us could go and uh, today seemed like a pretty good weather window according to all the weather routing services and they were pretty much right on with what they said everything that they said was going to be out there was out there um, you know it was not too rough for us to go by New York City but it was definitely rough but you know they predicted that we knew that so we were prepared for that once we got in the middle, it was smoothed out a lot more, and uh, you just ran the boat. We'd have probably been, we'd have been talking a little different if we hadn't broke a prop right away, because we'd have went a lot faster and it'd have been a lot rougher. Sure. Uh, now, you guys initially planned. What were your initial plans on arriving to Bermuda before the prop? We planned on running uh, 
the boat had 650 gallons of fuel in it and plus all of our gear safety gear food um, between all that stuff there's probably 6,000 pounds of extra weight so it would only run about 70 miles an hour uh, you know once it gets down to half tank of gas it'll go 84 miles an hour we plan on going you know going from 70 to 84 the whole way uh, and going as fast as it would go you know we weren't <clears throat> we you know when we first left we weren't going to wait and and try to just barely beat the record and and take it easy we wanted to go as fast as we could go just not necessarily beat the record as bad as we could we just wanted to get there as fast as we could <laughs> so that was the plan but then after the first prop breaks and you only have you know another spare you slow down and start readjusting what you're going to do um, we're going to try to get some more props and drive it back. It's been uh, almost exactly one year. We uh, we were here last August 4th and 5th. Yeah, it's a great question, and I really appreciate it. Uh, we, we wouldn't have been here without uh, the tremendous support of a lot of different sponsors. Uh, I think we need to start with uh, Skater Power Boats. Uh, Skater built this boat. It's a tremendous boat. It's a one-off. Um, and it, and it just if you go out there and look at the boat from what we just put it through, you won't find a single bolt or a single nut or a single issue with the entire boat um, it is it just performed phenomenally and uh, they have been a, just a tremendous partner with us uh, in this project so uh, I'd like to just uh, send a shout out to Peter at Skater for all of his support over the last year and helping us put this together um, as good as the boat is uh, it won't go anywhere unless you've got a great power plant and uh, so Cummins uh, Cummins Marine has has also really stepped up and helped us out um, the 5.9 liter 480 horsepower QSB engines that we have um, they just ran phenomenally uh, once we did have to slow down we were actually running less than half power the whole way here and we were still running over 55 miles an hour um, I think one of the interesting things is the combination of the boat, uh, the Cummins uh, 5.9 engines, and the Arneson surface drives allowed us to actually significantly break uh, the existing record, and and uh, and we did so using a lot less fuel. So uh, usually those two things don't go together, going faster and and being more efficient. But uh, the combination of uh, the Cummins engines and Skater's uh, 399 hull uh, and uh, Arneson drives really came together and uh, it's a pretty unique boat. But you, even if it's fast and efficient, you can't get here uh, if you don't know where you're going. And so uh, Simrad Electronics um, have just been great. They, uh, they, have a, they put a system in the boat where we've got three separate touchscreen GPS units. Uh, they're the NSS series. Uh, and they, you know, we had to come in here at night and um, we uh, had hoped that we could make it in before dark, but uh, since we had to slow up, uh, we had to come in at night and as you know, Town Cut Channel is pretty narrow. So coming 800 miles uh, exactly through Town Cut Channel, which is only probably 100, 200 feet wide, uh, the NSS uh, system that we had put us right down the pipe and that was uh, a big relief that we could count on that. I mean we pounded and pounded and pounded all the way here and uh, their system didn't even blink. Um, so that was, uh, that was very helpful. A couple of the other sponsors that have helped us out, uh, if you notice uh, Tyson did a lot of texting um, and setting up logistics and doing a lot of numbers and talking to some of our weather routers. He did that using a DeLorme a two-way satellite tracker and text messenger. And that was uh, great to be able to communicate ashore to our shoreside support team. Um, when we talk about weather routers, uh, Mike O'Brien and his team at Applied Weather Technologies uh, have been with us uh, for the last few years. And what they do is probably one of the most critical aspects of the whole race because uh, without the right forecast, uh, we can't even get off the dock. And their, as uh, Tyson indicated, their forecast was spot on. And so we knew when we needed to run fast and when we could slow up a little bit and make our way through the rough weather and pick up time on the other side. And so uh, they were a huge key to our victory. Um, Marlink, uh, which is a satellite airtime provider, uh, uh, partnered with us and they provided the airtime 
so that people could follow along and I think everyone that we've talked to today has been really appreciative of that service so we definitely want to thank them for their support um, and uh, certainly last but not least Marisline Limited and Apex uh, Technologies both uh, our gold level sponsors provided us the safety gear and uh, all of the uh, some financial funding to help us get the project uh, off the ground and across the finish line so we definitely want to say uh, we really appreciate Marisline Limited and Apex Technologies support uh, because without those two companies we couldn't have uh, made it happen yeah so uh, as I indicated, we had the DeLorme uh, satellite two-way text messengers, and what that does is uh, it connects to your, uh, in this case, we have iPhone uh, personal phones, and there's an app on there which will allow you to text uh, when you don't have cell service via a, uh, a satellite uplink. And so Tyson was able to talk to our weather routers, talk to our support team here. Uh, market uh, Bermuda Yacht Services has just been fantastic. And so he even had a boat waiting for us out at the uh, entrance to the harbor. Um, and once we got in here, just really rolled out the red carpet, uh, got us through customs, and has got us a place to stay. I mean, we just can't thank him enough. Uh, it just really makes everything so much easier. Um, one of the companies I didn't mention, although you saw that satellite stream, that's actually pretty hard to do uh, when you, from a boat that's going as fast as we were, we don't have self-service, so we had to stream via satellite. And so there's a small company named Digigon, which uh, came up with the software that allowed us to compress that video and pump it out over the uplink. And they actually built us a custom, ruggedized, waterproof computer that did that uh, um, data crunching and connected to the uplink. So we really want to thank Mike Dunleavy and his team uh, to help us put that together. Well, uh, the first thing that uh, uh, as we approached uh, North Rock, um, we raised uh, Bermuda Harbor Radio on the uh, VHF and they were very uh, congratulatory and uh, provided us safe routing uh, around the reef and on the way in. And that, uh, I think, was just the start of uh, what we routinely see when we come here to Bermuda. It's just a tremendous wealth and uh, welcoming from uh, everyone here in Bermuda. And so uh, the second thing that we, I think, witnessed was uh, um, Mark had set up a, uh, a buddy boat to meet us out at the, uh, uh, the finish line and uh, escort us in through the channel. And that was, uh, that was just a, a great relief uh, since we ran so long and so hard. It was nice to not have to uh, concentrate. We could just follow them in and get prepared to, uh, to tie up to the dock and go through customs. And as we were coming through Town Cut Channel, the strobes were just going off. It was dark and we couldn't really see all of the people, but we could tell that there was uh, dozens and dozens of dozens of people who had lined the uh, uh, Town Cut Channel and were taking pictures as we came through. And, you know, being a weekday and it was late when we came through, uh, that was just a great feeling. And as we uh, tied up to the customs dock, uh, those folks migrated down to talk to us and shake our hand and welcome us uh, to this great country. And uh, uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, my mom, uh, she told me yesterday that she was, at the last second, she decided that she was going to fly out from Virginia Beach and uh, wanted to be here when uh, Tyson and I came across the finish line. And uh, we said, well, you know, uh, I, guess we've, I guess we have to make it now. And uh, she said, well, I'm going to be there. I, 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 you guys will make it. Well, when we broke the first prop, uh, we texted her and said, don't come, <laughs> don't come, we might not make it. But she had uh, faith that we would pull through and uh, I actually didn't know that she was here until we tied up and so that was great to see her. And uh, as, as always, she's always there to support uh, and it was, it was great, really special for her to be here. Well, I think one of the things that uh, we really enjoy uh, boating and, and, and uh, doing these races, but I think the thing that some people may not know that are watching along is that we also really enjoy the engineering and the design aspect of these races. And so we are working on some races, uh, some, uh, some new designs uh, for next year uh, that we hope will be faster, safer, and more efficient. And so uh, I don't think you'll see the last of us uh, 
here in Bermuda and we may have some bigger plans uh, coming shortly so if anybody's interested uh, we have started a company it's uh, www.offshoreendurance.com and so you can uh, follow along as uh, we develop some new uh, technology and, and uh, test it into some new adventures.